Good evening and welcome to evening prayer. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You are my God and I will thank you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord who is good, whose mercy endures forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Good evening, dear friends. Today I will be leading you in prayer. My name is Anke Thea and I am an elder at the Protestant Church of Hellevoetsluis in the Netherlands. A few days ago, Derek Graham led you in prayer and he talked about citizenship. Tonight, perhaps an undercurrent theme could be culture. To begin with, I would like to offer you a song from a children's choir from Uganda. It is called Kids Gear and it has been touring the Netherlands for quite some years, also in Hellevoetsluis, performing in the Petrakerk. With the proceeds they are building their schools and paying for their education, which is wonderful. I'm not exactly sure of the words, but I know they are singing praise, so enjoy. <laughs> Thus says the Lord, I forget, I am reading from Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. Thus says the Lord, do not let the wise boast in their wisdom. Do not let the mighty boast in their might. Do not let the wealthy boast in their wealth, but let those who boast boast in this, that they understand and know me that I am the Lord. I act with steadfast love, justice and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, says the Lord. The word of the Lord thanks be to God. And for this we sing a song of David. Blessed are you, God of Israel, for ever and ever. For yours is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor and the majesty. Everything in heaven and earth is yours. 
Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. True wealth and honor come to you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might. Yours it is to give power and strength to all. And now we give you thanks, our God, and praise your glorious name, for all things come from you, and of your own we have given you glory and, and of your own we have given you glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was from the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from Mark, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verse 18 to 22. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. And people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, the wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them. Can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak. Otherwise, the patch pulls away from it and the new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost, and so are the skins. But one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have been learning this week, learning about Ash Wednesday. In the past year, I may, have, I may have mentioned this before, I've been learning a lot about differences between various Protestant beliefs and churches. Amazing. Different theologies. I knew, of course, but it never really affected me. Children who are baptized right after birth or soon after birth or at the age of 10. Communities that are inclusive to all gender and color and communities that are rather, well, unto themselves. In my country, we had a very strongly segregated society until mid-70s, which is called pillarization. Protestants, Roman Catholics and Socialists were very much separated. Literally, in our country, the Protestants lived above our great rivers and the Catholics below, and never the twain did meet. Our cultures were completely separate. I was obviously brought up in the Protestant pillar, and so I knew very little about Catholicism. And then comes Lent. In my church, we have just last week distributed over 500 Lent calendars. And we will give people weekly suggestions on how to share what they could do during Lent. Cooking for someone, sending a card to a sick person, making a flower arrangement, looking after a neighbor. And in our church also we know that Lent started on the 17th of February this year. But in our church there is no ritual to mark that moment. Because hey, Ash Wednesday, that was Catholic, right? It was never integrated in how we worship. So then Ash Wednesday came. I saw it on the URC East Midland Synod page. It was being announced with great joy that our good friend Tom Schumann would lead in communion. 
so I participated with cinnamon tea and some tea bread. I listened to the wonderful, gentle and kind words that Tom spoke to mark this point in the most important weeks of our liturgical year. I have in my heart and mind sought for what my ash is and was, what went wrong and what I should correct within myself and unto others. So this is what I am grateful for this evening, this Lent, to have learned something, to know that I've been missing something that I had not missed before. And it has nothing to do with the nomination. It's only coming together in love and sharing what binds us as humans and as Christians. Now we only use, usually read two readings from the Bible. But actually today uh, is a reading from 1 Corinthians 1 from verse 18 and it's very on point. It's about symbolism versus reason versus faith. Jews, Greeks, Christians. Three ways of think thinking. Three cultures. If we think about it, there is a bit of a each in every one of us. So to close this off, I would like to read verse 20 to 25 from um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand, demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Sunday is the day that the Magnificat is sung. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. We have heard it in various variations. And tonight the Schola Cantorum of St. Peter's in Chicago sings it for you tonight. With gracious consent of their musical director, James Michael Thompson. Oh, no. 
Let us now give our daily sacrifice of prayer. Let us pray. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, by triumphing over the powers of darkness, Christ has prepared a place for us in the new Jerusalem. May we who have this day given thanks for his resurrection, praise him in the eternal city of which he is the light, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit over now, O one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's be silent for a moment to think of everything we are grateful for. Personally, I am grateful for your company this evening and to have learned so much this week about Lent and the path to Easter. Blessed are you, sovereign God, reigning in glory. Cloud and deep darkness proclaim your holiness. Radiant light shows forth your truth. Jesus has entered the cloud of your presence. He has taken his seat at the right hand of majesty. Perfect sacrifice, he has put away sins. Merciful high priest, he pleads for our weakness. Always our brother, he prepares a place in heaven. Ruler of all, he establishes your reign. Dawning light for the righteous, hope of sinners. Blessed are you, sovereign God. High over all. Amen. And now for our prayer of intercession. As evening falls, we bring to you the needs of all the world. For all Christians, that we may preach the reign of God in word and deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nations that the peace of God may dispel the rumblings of war, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our community that our lives may be marked by the spirit of conversion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who suffer that the resurrection of Christ may be, may be their hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful departed that theirs now may be light, refreshment and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all facing the challenges of COVID-19, all key workers, NHS and car home, care home staff, and any and all by putting their lives at risk for the good of the rest of us by ensuring essential services. From among those who know the challenge of COVID-19, we pray for two of our ministers and their households and one of our staff members. The Reverend Samuel Salungwe, his wife Evelyn and son Lusungo. The Reverend Liz Adams, her husband Jay, daughter Chloe and Jay's mum Ely. We pray with Donna Gordon, Synod Safeguarding Officer for her daughter Bethany in isolation at home. And... An update for, for uh, Alison Headley, or from Alison Headley, who we have been praying for uh, quite some time now. And we can say that um, 
Thanks to wonderful prayers, Gemma, who is um, uh, her mother, I think. I'm not quite sure. I'm sorry. Thanks to wonderful prayers, Gemma is very much better and has gone back to work. And the other mom, Claire, has been diagnosed with a uh, long civet and is going to rehabilitation. And Dorothy is also much better. So all of you, thank you for your prayers and also for the ark. We are back to full numbers from tomorrow, which both excites and terrifies Alison. But we keep smiling, she says, and offer the best and safest care in a learning environment that they can give. So we do still pray with Alison Hadley for the people that I've just mentioned, Gemma and Dorothy and Claire, and for the Ark Nursery in Leicester, where there are two positive cases, which I said, whose mum families are now isolating. And, well, we continue and, and close them in our prayers. We also continue to pray for Celia, with Celia, for her grandson Alfie and the family. And with Alison and Paul for James and for Dorothy. And with Prince for Cheryl, who is undergoing tests. And with Liz for Ryan, who is having brain surgery next Tuesday, followed by chemotherapy. And for the Reverend Michael Pevy. And we also pray for the bereaved. The Reverend Douglas Watson and all who grieve for his wife Sheila. For Donna Gordon and all who grieve for her sister Faye. The Reverend Martin Ferris and all who grieve for his mother Marion. And the family of the Reverend Ralph, Ralph Everly. And those closest to John Shaw and who grieve for him. And to the family and friends of Dr. Bex Lewis, an amazing woman whose work on faith and digital media has been transformational and whose friendship touched many lives and brought joy. And Alison writes, Gemma is a mum and the ark and has COVID. Dorothy is, also, is my mum who had a fall. James is my son who is in need of prayer, still for which I am so grateful. We pray with you, Alison. Let us also pray for the Reverend Jeffrey Clark. May his week away have been refreshing and inspirational. Dear God, please continue to bless him in his work and calling. As we now end the first day of this week, God of all mercy, hear our evening prayer. Bring us safely through this night that we may give you praise with the coming of dawn. We ask this through Christ, the word made flesh. Amen. And please pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. Birds can be heard singing in the following impromptu piano improvisation, played this morning by Aert van der Gronde during worship in our church, the Vestingkerk in Hellevoetsluis. And may I also say thank you, Aert, because actually you do not know this. He is sitting opposite me and doing all the nice things with videos and camera and microphone. Thank 